There you go, Mick. That'll warm you up. Oh, nice one, Sid. I need it. Oh, tough and said this, isn't it? Round the clock guard duty. Still, if it stops the virus from spreading. Hey, me and the kids are moving into buys, you know. I've gone round after my shift. Is he still away then? Yeah, he knows when to get off, doesn't he? I don't think Emma knows where he is. So I thought if we stay on the coach, I might stand a chance. Oh, here we go. Bayonets at the ready. Just leave the milk there, will you, mate? Bit of a problem on the close. Nice one. Yeah. Wasn't too hard, was he? Yeah, I suppose not. In the days, the way, Sim. I don't think everyone's going to be too keen on our little no-go area. How do you mean? Well, they can't go to work for a start. People are going to lose money because of all this. Yeah, well, they'll get it sorted out pretty quickly, won't they, once they find out what's causing it? Yeah, I hope so. I hate to think of anyone else suffering the way Gary did. You're not still blaming yourself for that lad, are you? That's nah, hard not to, Sid. When you got the likes of Ron Dixon accusing you of all kinds. Yeah, well, take no notice of him. He's a racist get. What if he's right, though, Sid? What if it is something to do with the pizza parlor? Oh, Mick, no way. Well, where's it come from, then, all this? It's like something out of a sci-fi movie or something. Hey, uh... I don't think we're part of some big plan, do you? Like some big mad experiment? I don't know what to think anymore, Sid. I just don't know what to think, mate. Sleeping, but uh, she's very weak. I've tried to talk her into going into hospital, but she won't hear of it. She's so stubborn. Well, we know where she got that from, don't we? <laughs> yes, I suppose you're right. Anyway, I'm sure if we can all just stick together, we'll beat this damn thing. You're nicer to we stand there. Absolutely. Oh, I've got something to show you. Now, this is a, a draft plan for the rotor for manning the cordon. It'll stop people getting out and getting in. Oh, nice one. I've divided it into four-hour shifts to help spread the burden. Hey, very impressive, man. Well, I've been up here all night with Jean and helped take my mind off things, actually. Not with Audrey as well. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, how is she? Still the same, I'm afraid. Which is a tough old bird. Yeah. You know, Ben, this is just what we need. I'll write her up properly. Simbant's out there now. I'll get Jimmy to relieve her. I'm, uh, I'm just glad I can be of some help. How's you mean? Well, you'll no doubt notice there's one name missing on that uh, rotor. Mine. Hey, you've got enough on your place already. Yeah, I'd love to have been with the troops on this one. Front line, so to speak. Instead, I've got to be a bit of a backroom boy, I'm afraid. Hey, you're all right, mate. Thanks. No problem. You just worry about Jean and the rest of your family. And leave everything else to me. And anyway, I know where you are if I need you, don't I? Of course you do. Later, Ben. Listen, uh, are you sure it's all right me and the kids moving in while there's cordons on? Yeah, I suppose so. Until Barry comes back anyway. If he comes back. Thanks. I thought I could help keep an eye on things better from here. Listen, the mobile clinic's gonna be here later this morning. Is it all right if we're using here as a waiting room? Yeah, I'll get things sorted. But they want everyone to give a urine sample. The doc left some bottles for me to give out to the neighbours and that's in there. There's one for you and all. Oh, I see. Morning. All right, Jimmy. Hiya. Did you sleep all right? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Nice comfy bed, that isn't it, eh, Clax? Yes, it is. Anyway, I'm off. Come on, Jim, you're on recording duty. I'll behave, will you? I'm on to a winner. 
Let's not go to get down to the bookies. Look, you've got to stay here, Jimmy. You, along with everybody else, are in quarantine. That's all of us. Well, what's this? Martial law. It's only a virus, isn't it? It's just a bit of flu. Two people are dead, Jimmy. Now I need you and that mutt of yours to make sure nobody goes on or off the close. Yeah, listen, Michael, you stay where you are till all this is blown over. <coughs> yeah, and tell our Jackie to stay at your mum's as well. <coughs> Too right, we're not hanging around. We're getting out of here. <coughs> yeah, all right, son. I'll speak to you soon. Turn out now. <coughs> ah, Michael, he was... Uh... <coughs> are you all right? You are. Coughing and spluttering like an old banger. Yeah. <coughs> Just a bit chesty, that's all. Hey, hang on, you don't think I'll... Oh, I don't know. I hope not. Well, how do I look? Have I gone green or anything? No. You look a bit pasty, but you always do. Have a look at me tongue, will you? Well, I don't know what I'm looking for. I can't see anything. Well, am I hot? I can't tell. Right, that's it. We're out of here and no blooming barricade's gonna stop us either. Go we'll park outside number five, boys. Cheers, no. Yeah, I'll make it that. So what's with the clinic? They want to see everybody for a checkup as soon as possible. I make sure everybody brings a sample here. Well, listen, I'm going to take some of these. We're going to be doing urine tests. Hey, Jimmy. You will. Well, how else are you going to tell if you've got this uh, virus or whatever it is? Here you go, sir. You mean you can tell what's up with you just by testing your water, like? Oh, aye, you can tell loads just by looking at your water now, you know. Like what? Well, like diseases, viruses, all sorts. You're joking, aren't you? Hey, you could even tell what you've had for your breakfast. It's the wonders of modern science, mate. Well, I think I'll give it a miss. No, you won't. They're all having it OK. And they're going to be doing blood tests and all. Blood tests? Oh, come on, Jimmy, don't tell me you're scared of needles. No. Just don't like doctors and stuff like that. Well, I'm getting off all this talk of passing water. I'm bursting. See you later, sir. See ya. Hi, hi, what's this? The Beverly Hillbillies. Can you get this shifted, please? Where are you going? Through your cord and we're getting out of here. No, nobody's going through there. Leave it where it is, Jimmy. Uh, I asked you to shift it, didn't I? What? Listen, we're going through, Mick. We don't want to be brown bread. You can't leave. No, are you to tell us what we can and we cannot do? I mean, you don't even live on the close. I'm acting on behalf of the residents, aren't I? Oh, yeah. Since when? Since we found out all sorts were dying. I've had to move me and the kids into Barry's because of this cordon. And that's why we're not hanging around. I mean, I've heard even Barry Grant's done a runner, so get out of my way. Look, I'm only taking advice from the medical people, you know. Yeah, and that's all it is, Mick, advice. It's not the law, is it? I don't see any coppers or anything. Look, if you go through there, you're going to screw the whole thing up. Tough. What if you do spread the virus? More people sick or dying? Oh, so it's one rule for us, is it? I mean, I've offered to Siobhan, and why is she allowed to go out? Because the kids in the Aussie is at death's door. I mean, the Aussie arranged the ambulance for it. If you want to go out there risking other kids, they go right on through. Hi. Hi, yeah. Okay. How's Thomas? Um, no better, I'm afraid. Okay, we're all pulling for him, you know, Pat. It'll be all right. We were just worried about our jobs. Well, don't you think we're all worried? I mean, the banks, the Jordaches, we've all got kids. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Let's go back. Yeah, we'll get Josh checked out at the clinic. Look, uh, you better take these. They're doing your tests. Sample bottles. One each for you, me and Rachel. I said, madam, I'm not sure about this test. It'll be all right. Everyone's taking it. Yeah, but what if... What if something is wrong? What with you? Oh, you never know. Oh, come on. You'll be all right. You're as fit as a flea. Now, I'll get the kettle on and we'll get to work on filling these bottles, OK? Is everything all right? Yes, yeah, sound. What are you doing? Um, I'm just training cracker. Uh, you know, a bit of toiletry etiquette. Helping the better your doings, like, you know. All right. We'll have fun. Oh, that's it, girl. Right to the top.
He's getting worse. He's dying. He's not going to die, Patsy. What if he does? What then? What if he dies without his daddy here? I need Max, Dad. I want him home. Yes, of course you do. Why us? Why is this happening? I don't know. After all we've been through with Alice, now Thomas and Mum and... I know, love. I'm so... so sorry, Dad. There's no need. I feel so guilty. It's not your fault. I didn't mean it. It just... it just came into my head just for a moment. What did? I thought that Thomas had more to live for than Alice. I wished it was Alice who was ill. And I feel so guilty because I wouldn't want anything to happen to her. I love her so much, Dad. I, I... Oh, my darling. Seems like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Just have a seat, the nurse will call you. Right. Thanks. Okay. Hey, I said, hey, bring those over here. What are you doing? It's all right. Mick's put me in charge of collecting the samples. Come on, don't be shy. I'll stick yours with the rest of them. There you go, Jim. Watch them labels. They're a bit dodgy. Mine's the one with the good head on it. All right, don't worry, I'll sort it. It's probably because of the warm, innit? So you're here for the moment of truth, eh? It's like the lottery, innit? Let's just hope your number doesn't come up. Wait, Jimmy, couldn't you have put that in a bag or something? Have you been on the ale? It's almost a full pint in there. Care to see a cracker there. You are? Every last drop, mate. What's the point of that? Cos I don't want some beaut with a microscope looking at me water, telling me I've got all sorts. Well, that's the old point, you divvy. Yeah, well, I'd rather not know, thanks very much. Mm. Well, I've heard it's taken the, uh, But that takes the biscuit. Yeah, well, I'll be out of here later, won't I? So I couldn't give two short ones. You what? There's supposed to be a barricade? Yeah, and I need to be on the other side of it, don't I, eh? I've got business to attend to, deals to make. Yeah, I know what sort of deals you're talking about. You're still selling that crap, aren't you, yet, so like. Yeah, and making money, sin. Loads of it. And I'm missing out stuck in this place, aren't I? You're a waste of space, Jimmy. Do one, will you? Well, that's exactly what I am going to do. A runner, like Barry. Who's there? Yeah, all right, love. Be right there. I'll just stick this in a sample bottle, eh, while it's nice and warm for you. Well, what's the point of opening? Because it's my shop and it's our business. Yeah, but the parade's going to be deserted, isn't it? Everyone's staying indoors. Yeah, I know, but people this side of the court are going to have to eat, aren't they? And I'm going to be there for them. Ron, you're wasting your time. Stay inside with us. All right, Mr Dixon, is your shop still open? Wasting my time, am I? Just on my way round there, son. You know, sometimes there is no talking to you. I'll see you later. Bye, my sweet. Business as usual. I'll walk round with you. Nice one. I'm starving. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Hi, Where are you going? Taking him to the clinic for his checkup. Oh, right. They're giving our car the old cleaner, and uh, they reckon I'm going to be okay, too. Oh, nice one. Can I play with Lee? I don't have to go to school. I know that, son, but you've got to go to the clinic. After we've been, please. All right, but only if the doctor said it's okay. Yes. And make sure you don't go in them woods. They're off limits. Hi, Mick. Got your hands full there, haven't you? Yeah, just a few things you might need while we're staying at Barry's. Where are you off? Round the shop. You're not opening up, are you? I most certainly am. Anything you need? No, thanks. Really. Hey, Mick. Spread the word round. I'm open, will you? Trading as usual. Nothing stops Ron Dixon. How about no lecky? You what? They turned the power off at the parade. See you later, Ron. So Patricia's gone back to the hospital, then? She wanted to be with Thomas. Oh, of course. Oh, the poor girl. She's going through hell. Not been much fun for any of us, has it? No. You gave me one hell of a fright last night. I gave myself a hell of a fright. I wish you'd go to hospital. Whatever for? Because you're not well. Look, I have nearly finished my soup. I've got my appetite back. I'm feeling...
feeling better. That's what you said yesterday, just before you collapsed. I'm over the worst. I'm convinced of it. I was even thinking of getting out of bed. Out of the question. I could just make a phone call. Who to? The hospital to see how Audrey is. I phoned earlier. There's no change. She's still stable, they said. I'd still like to make a phone call. I mean, she's practically one of the family, and oh, I do feel so sorry for her. I oh, know. God, it's rotten luck. Just finish your soup. I'll phone the hospital. Well, give her my love. Who knows? If she's feeling better, she might even be able to come to the phone. With any luck, yes. Just going to stretch me legs. Crack as constitutional, like. But where shall I tell Mick you've gone? You what? If he asks. Listen, what's his game, eh? Hordering everyone around? I'll be round and about checking the court and doing me bit, OK? All right. I'll see you later. Yeah, see ya. Come on, girl, let's get out of here. Yes, Mrs. Audrey Manners. Ah. Thank you. I've seen the film where this happened? What a big virus like? Yeah, they cordoned the whole place off, brought the army and that in. Serious? Yeah, and shot anyone who tried to escape. They're not going to do that to us, are they? I don't know. It must be pretty serious, though, to keep them off school. Oh, what was that? Shh, get down. It sounds weird. Cracker. Cracker, where are you, girl? Cracker. No! My uncle! What's he doing here? Cracker! Looking for his dog, I reckon. Cracker! Patricia, look, I'm sorry to have to ask, but have you heard anything from Max? There's still no sign of Barry. I think he really has disappeared. Yeah, we'd left all sorts of messages for Max, but still no word. Do you think he might have changed his mind about marrying me? Got scared or something? No, I'm sure he still wants to marry you. Just remember, you know, he needs time on his own to make sure it is what he really wants. I just don't know what to think anymore. Even whether I want to marry him after this. Now I'm stuck in his house with Jimmy Corkle and Mick and his kids all because of this stupid virus thing. I'm sorry, Patricia. You don't want to hear all this. Look, I'll get off. Well, I'll let you know as soon as I do hear anything from Max yet. I hope everything goes OK with Thomas. Well, I'm just on my way back to the hospital now. But good luck. We're all mucking in, like. Everyone's doing their bit. It's like being back in the army, night duty. <laughs> so I can leave it to you, then? Yeah, no sweat. Great. Hey, is this that Jimmy's dog? Where did you find that? It was in the woods. The woods? What have I told you about going in the woods? You shouldn't be there, especially now. Jimmy Corker was in there looking for it. Dave, he's done a runner. He's broken the quarantine. Where was he going? I don't know. He was just in the woods. I'm going to go and get him back. Keep an eye on me for us, will you? No, hang on. It's dark. You'll never find him. I'm not having him break the cordon. Yeah, I know, but let me find him. You? Yeah, I can use my army training. Taught me how to track at night. Yeah, but everybody's supposed to stay this side of the cordon. Everyone except me. I've had the virus and I'm over it. I've got the all clear now. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. And listen, don't worry. I'll bring him back. Mm 
Audrey died. So you had someone. Sorry, did I didn't wake you. No, you know, I was only dozing. <clears throat> you just thought I'd get some water. Couldn't sleep, eh? Oh, there's something on your mind, isn't there? I think, I think I might have this virus. Oh, come on, everybody's thinking that. It's just because we had those tests today. Oh, I feel awful, really odd. Oh, come on, you'll be all right. Look, we'll get the results tomorrow and you'll get the all clear. We all will. But what if I don't? You will. Oh, come on, I'm going to bed. I'm up first thing in the morning on that barrier. Well, come on, stop worrying, OK? Mick! Got someone to see you. Oh, all right, Jimmy. Been walkabout, have you? No, I haven't. I've been looking for Cracker. She slipped a lead, didn't she, Hey, There's helicopters and all sorts out there, do you know that? It's the army keeping us in. We're all part of some experiment or something, do you know? That was a police helicopter, Jimmy. They're always looking for skellies in the woods. Mick, I'm telling you, there's something going on. Oh, save it, soft lad. Nice one, Carl. You, you snitch. All right, David. David, everything all right? I've just had some very grave news. What is it? It's Audrey. She passed away this evening. Oh, God. Pod old cow. Take it easy, mate. Who's it going to claim next? Where in God's name is it all going to end? The Jimmy Corkill story is out now, priced £4.99 and available from most bookshops. Next tonight, three more genuine warts and all travel adventures captured on The Real Holiday Show. You can't do your recording duty. <sighs> Mick, I feel crap. I haven't had my breakfast yet. No excuses, Jimmy. Just do it. <sighs> How are you today? Not too bad. Still no word from Barry? He's always been a bit unpredictable, you know. Listen, uh I was thinking about inviting a few people around tonight, you know, having a bit of a get-together. There's all this going on. Well, why not? People could have a drink, a bit of a laugh, cheer each other up. Best time, isn't it? I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Barry wouldn't mind, would he? He's not here, so we can't, can he? Mm. No, you do it. It's a good idea. That's all, then. I'll pass the word round. What the hell's that? What 
What's he up to now? <laughs> Mandy? <coughs> My first customer of the day. What can I do you for, sir? Well, you can shift this lot for a start. Merely being public spirited, Michael. You what? Well, I'm taking a leaf out of your book, aren't I? We do all need to pull together. And if people are stuck here in the close, well, there I am, ready to serve. It's all about helping each other out. And this is what you call helping people out. Ten bob for a tin of beans. All right, Mick. I might have marked a couple of items up a few bob, but only to cover me overheads. So people can't get out to the shops, and you think you've got them by the short and curly, just rip them off like? But I've got to make a living, haven't I? We're all in this together, you know, Ron. And the price is your charge. You only be careful the lynch mob don't get hold of you. Well, I'm glad to be a service. You have a nice day now. Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. What's he do? Trying to milk people dry. He thinks he's got it all boxed up, you know, his own little monopoly, like, because people can't get to the shops. All right. So he doesn't know I've got the all clear, then? No. Listen, can you drive? Yeah. Got my license in the army. Do us a favor, will you? Go around all the houses, see what people want from the shops. All the houses? There's a drink in it for you. I mean, just take the orders and go and pick it up. Listen, you can use a van if you like. Well, yeah, OK. I'm frightened. Is that why you wouldn't go now for your checkup? I'm scared what they might find. I don't know if I can go back for the results. You need to know, don't you? Well, maybe it's best if I don't know. Maybe I should just let happen what's going to happen. What do you mean? Well, it's fate giving me a way out. It'll make things a lot easier. There'll be no trial, no prison. It'll all be over. Stop it. The best thing for everyone. Right, that's it. I've heard enough. Come on, get dressed. Oh. We're going over that clinic to get the results. But... No buts. We're going to go over there and get everything sorted out now. Oh, hello, Mick. Hi, hi. What's up, Mick? Audrey's sheets from the spare room. I know, clutching at straws. Still, until we know for sure what's causing it. Anything's worth a go. Yeah, I suppose so. So, uh, how did Jean take the news about Audrey? Hit her very hard. I don't think she'd quite believe it. Mm, joined the club. Indeed. Any news on Thomas? Not good. No improvements? Afraid not. Touch and go, actually. Patricia's still at the Aussie? Practically keeping a vigil by the lad's bedside. Come on, Bing. It's not over yet, you know. He's a real little hard case, that Thomas, and he'll fight it all the way. Yes, of course he will. He won't let the side down. Mum is here for you, darling of you all the time. We all are. Because we love you so much. Me, Alice, Grandma, Granddad, and Daddy. He's thinking of you. He's thinking of you, Thomas. He'll be home soon. Daddy will be home for you. Hurry up, Max. Hurry up. Oh, come on, love. I wish I could, Jack, but I can't. I'm stuck. What if you get sick? Who's going to look after you? I'll get by. I've got cracker here, haven't I? We'll manage. Look, love, think of yourself. Go on, forget about me. I can't. You've got to. No. Hey, hey, what are you doing? I'm not leaving you here on your tod. Jackie! No, I'm coming in with you for those test results. You are? And no more than one. I'm gonna stand by you. God almighty, Ron, you couldn't give those beans away. Just a matter of time, love, just a matter of time. People are too frightened to come out. Yeah, but they've got to eat, haven't they? Just wait till they get the munchies. They are, what did I tell you? Like lambs to the slaughter. Morning! All right, Ron. Hey, got some nice tins of corned beef for you. Uh, no, thanks. Please have a quick with guts. Hey, Ron, you sure you're not wasting your time? I'm not beaten yet. Supply and demand, innit? We've got all the supply. Let's just wait for the demand. Oh, morning, my sweet.
So you're both more than welcome. Oh, a party? We'd love to come. It'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, it's just the neighbours. It's not really a party. It was Mick's idea. So, uh, will your Barry be there? No, I don't think so. Oh, still not back then, now? Be back, will he? Not till this little lot's over. So, you'll be having a bit of a buffy then, will you? Um, just a few sandwiches and that, not much. Great. Where do you want to start? Sorry? How about some tin tuna to begin with? I don't think so. Oh, I see. You want to go up market, eh? Well, it's a special occasion, isn't it? I've got some lovely red salmon. I think you've got the wrong end of the stick. Hey. Do you want this light in the kitchen? Don't worry, I won't bite. Tea? No, uh, thank you. Now, we've had the results of your urine sample returned to us. Tell me, have you been suffering any unusual symptoms? Any nausea? I, uh, <clears throat> I have been feeling tired and I've been sick a few times. Is it infectious? My daughter's... Oh, no, it isn't infectious. You don't need to worry about that. Would you mind if I asked you how old you were, Mrs. Jordash? 39, but what's... Well, I'm pleased to be able to tell you that you definitely haven't got the virus. However, your sample does indicate that there is something else. You're two months pregnant. Hello. How do you feel? Oh, no. I can't stop thinking about Audrey. Same here. So sudden. Still. There's life in this old dog yet. That's my girl. What were you looking at? Oh, um... Scottish Highlands, 93. In the net? Yeah. yeah. Our visit to the distillery. That was really enjoyable. As I remember, you enjoyed it a bit too much. <laughs> yes. Why do you know me? Always a pushover for a good malt whiskey. Happy days, eh? Well, uh, there'll be more happy days for it. Remember? Yes. Yes, of course. Look, why don't you take yourself off for a walk or something? You need me here. I'm not going to go anywhere. Go on. Off you go. To clear your head. Yes, I, I suppose I could do with a breath of fresh air. You all right, man? Let's just go home. Oh, what is it? What did he say? It's not the virus, is it? No. Oh, thank God you had me going there for a while. Well, that's one less thing you have to worry about anyway. <coughs> did you get on? Everything all right? Oh, I'm all right, but he's got his temper. Take it easy, will you? Take ya? it easy, take it easy! I'm worried sick, and you pull a stunt like that. It was an accident. It was an accident the day you were born, Jimmy. You were? Just how dense are you? Going and giving them dog pee. I was scared. Scared, you're pathetic. And I'll tell you what, it's a good job you haven't got this temper, because if you did have, I could get your foot down. Hey, Jackie, uh, what are you doing here? I'm wasting my time, I'll see you. Hey, hang on, you can't leave. You was? I tried telling you. Once you're this side of the bay, you've got to stay here. For how long? Well, till we find out what's causing this virus. Oh, and how long's that gonna be? As long as it takes. But I've got pork chops to frost for me tea. Well, I'm sorry, Jax, but Jimmy should have told you. I tried. I could kill you, Jimmy. What am I going to do now, eh? Where am I going to stay? Well, me and Jax have got a nice, comfy double bed over in Barry's. Am I right, Mick? Looks like we've got no choice. Welcome to the hotel, Jax. So, did you get a full house, then? You what? Did you get the all clear, like me and our Josh? Not exactly. Oh, no. You haven't, have you? No, but I wish I had. Well, what's wrong then? They've just told me I'm pregnant.
so sure about this. Oh, come on, it'll do you good. It'll do us both good. Yeah, well, I'm not in the mood for socialising. Well, you might enjoy yourself. What with all those people there gossiping about us? Uh, well, the good thing about this virus is it's given them something else to talk about. And with no postman getting through, there's no eight mail. So come on, stop worrying. And they'll give us a plate from that racket upstairs anyway. Come on. Well, I don't want to stay for long. Just a couple of drinks, that's all. I suppose so. So how do you reckon they got the samples mixed up? It was bound to happen, wasn't it, eh, with Mick leaving that cork in charge of collecting the things? Do you reckon? Oh, it's a shame, though, isn't it? You're not being pregnant. No, but someone on the clothes is, aren't they? Looks like somebody's in for a surprise. Too right. <laughs> Not much of a do this, is it? No, nah, it's paranoia, isn't it? They're all staying indoors and put me out of business at the same time. All right, Ron. Nah, not bad, sir. All good, healthy scrum, this. Fish on the shelves today, you know. All right, Mick, you made your point. I'd love to know what's going on, you know. No between Barry and Abe. Would you waste all the run, eh? Poor girl. I thought you said they were dead serious. Well, yeah, I was never said nothing to me. I'm not going to be panicked, anyway. Yeah, she's been putting the pressure on him. After this crash. Oh, do you reckon? Definitely. Well, I'll get it. Okay. Well, she's seen the size of his watch, hasn't she? Bank balance. Because she hasn't seen the size of anything else, have you? You what? Then, they've had separate bedrooms, haven't they? They haven't, you know. Oh, yeah. oh good way. All right. All right, sir. Mandy. Hiya. Right, come on, you two. Get stuck into that buffet, eh? Go on. Yeah, right, thanks, Gemma. Thanks. Sausage rolls there, sin. Thanks, Gemma. Cheeky mate, showing her face in public. Really? Well, Off the murder. Know. She's got more fun than the pair, right? Mind you, she's in good Back company, isn't she? That slime bag, cork hill. And where's this, like, the house behind yours? Yeah, you know, the little old one that lives on her own. Yeah, right. Hey, Mick, you heard this? Got the one going down with the plague here. Who? Little Alman who lives behind Mandy and Simba. Well, I believe they've taken him into hospital. So it's still spreading, eh? Yeah. All right, Big A, nice to see you, mate. Hello, Mick. I thought I'd uh, pop in for a few minutes, you know. Chance to unwind. Nice one. Hey, can't get Bing a drink, will you? Oh, thank you. A small malt, if you've got one. Yeah, sure. It's good to see you, Bing. Look, uh, I was sorry to hear about you, about your mate Audrey. Oh, thanks, Ron. Yes, it was a tragedy, I'm afraid. I hear, I hear your little Tommy hasn't been too well either. No, no, poor little soldier. Mm, poor Pat. She must be worried sick. <sighs> well, she's a brave girl. She's bearing up. Ah, oh, well, no, Maxie. Must be friends, OK? So how's your Jean? She any better? Not much change, I'm afraid. Day home, Mr. C. Chance for a refill. Max. Where have you been? Sorry. I am sorry. Thomas. How is he? He's really sick, Max. I don't think he. I am so, so sorry. How long has he been in here? A week. I didn't know. I didn't know all this time. And I wasn't here for him. No, you weren't, to know. I shouldn't have gone away, you know. I, I should have been here for you. You, you needed me. No, don't, don't. You're here now. Where, where, where's Alice? She's all right. She's being looked after. So helpless. I want to hold him. No, Max, Max, you can't. He is my son. No, Max, in case you catch the virus. No, I don't care. Not about myself. Max, Max you Thomas. might pass it on to Alice. <sighs> what is this virus thing? They don't know. What do you mean they don't know? What have the doctors said? Just that it's extremely virulent. It can kill. Can't they treat it? Can't, can't they stop it? They don't know what's causing it. What do you mean they don't know? It's their job. I mean, someone's got to do something. It's not as simple as that, Max. They don't know what they're dealing with here. They're trying their best. 
What hope have we got if the doctors don't know themselves? They're not gods, Max. They're only human. This isn't some guessing game. I mean, they're playing with people's lives here. Son's life. with the doctors here. Yeah. Stay with Thomas. He needs you. Good idea to mix this, isn't it? Cheer everyone up, eh? Yeah. So you've heard anything from Barry at all? No. Nothing. I don't know where he is. He hasn't even phoned. What did I say? Well, thanks for the drink, old son. I'd uh, better make tracks, I think. Um, this was a splendid idea, you know. It pulled everyone together. Just what we needed. Of course, Annie. Eh? Give our best to Jeannie. Yes, I will. Yeah, take care, eh? Pack it up, eh, Bing? And uh, give our love to Pat and Thomas. Yes, thanks. You really all have been most decent. No, you're all right. Don't mention it, Bing. No, really, you, you've all rallied round superbly. You've been absolute troopers. I'm just sorry I haven't been able to be here more. Hey, come on, Bing, you've done more than enough. One can never do enough in difficult times like this. If, I, if I've let you down, if I've, if I've not been here when you needed me, I, I, I really am sorry. It's just I've been so... Hey, come on, Bing, come on. I'll see you at the door. Thanks, in way. Take care, Bing. Poor old Bing, he doesn't know if he's coming or going. I feel dead sorry for him. He must be going through hell. Can we go home, please? We've only just come. Please. Well, can I just finish my drink? Yeah, feel free. I'll see you later. Mand! Some party this is turning out to be. There's going to be nobody left here at this race. Yeah, well. All the more ale for us, eh, kid? Jean, I'm back. for an ambulance. You're doing fine, my darling. The ambulance is on its way. No. Sorry? I'm not going to hospital. Side. This is my home. I want to stay here. But you're not well. You look after me. You'll be much better off in hospital. I'm not going. Go to the drawer. Open it, please. There's an envelope inside. Open it. Your will. My living will. You promise. My choice. It's what I want. Jean, please. It states clearly what I want should I fall ill. I don't want to die in hospital. I want to stay here with you. 
Jean. In the name of God, please. Send them away, David. I can't. You promised me. Oh, Jean. I want to die here at home with you. What did they say? Who is it? They're doing all they can for him. Uh, no. No, he's he's not he's not gonna die. We're gonna lose him, Max. I know no, it. I know it. No, he can't die. Look, there's gotta be a cure. Now this um we'll pay for it, right? We'll sell the house, the, the restaurants. We'll do whatever we can. It's too late, Max. No, no, no. No, they can't let him die. He's our son. They can't. They can't. Thanks, love. See ya. Shall I ring for the doctor? <coughs> God, steady on, old girl, steady on. Lord, you're burning up. Yes, send me to the hospital. I'm not going. <sighs> right, that's a coffee with two sugars and tea with one sugar. Right. Cheers, my thanks. What are they doing now? Taking samples out of the bath. Oh, not again. How long will you be? I'm best. Hey, me first. Me first? I'm desperate and I might want to be sick. Sick? 
start just slowly here, aren't you? Haven't you got it yet? Look, your sample test proves positive for pregnancy, right? Right. So it must have got mixed up with someone else's sample. Right. You still haven't got it, have you? Oh, you're not. You're not telling me. Well, I can't see who else's sample it could have got mixed up with. You're not. You'll find nothing in my bath except bleach. Me first. Yeah, well, I reckon he's on the run. We're going to get a message through from Interpol or the CIA or something. The train has been found at the bottom of this river. A couple of concrete blocks tied to his feet. You keep your voice down. Or else slumped in the back of some car, riddled through with gunshot wounds. Oh. Do you think he's dead? Love. There hasn't been a squeak from him in over a week, has there? Hey, over a week. Maybe he is. What's going to happen to the club? <laughs> we haven't got that kind of money. What are you talking? Oh, I don't know. Hundred grand? Not hundred impossible, though. Yeah. Stuff will pie in the sky, isn't it? Because he's indestructible, isn't he, Barry Grant? He's the proverbial bad penny. <laughs> he always turns up in the end. A bit older, a bit richer. All right. Uh, the kids up here? I haven't heard anything up there, love. Right, I'm going to put a bomb under them. Rosie Banks is having them today. A bit of schoolwork or something like that. Keep them off the streets, you know. Listen, I've organised with uh, Carl Banks to sort out some shopping and stuff like that, so if there's anything you need. Oh, uh, right, good. Somebody could deliver the odd thing, like, you know, if we wanted anything uh, delivered on the outside. Well, if it's not too big, no problem. Um, what have you got that needs delivered? No, it's just a butter. Abstract question, wasn't it? Abstract? No, yeah, well, OK, abstract. I don't know the word, but it do I? Hypothetical. Hypothetical, yeah, hypothetical, that's all. I'm just interested in case I did have something, you know, that I wanted delivered, that's all. She's been there all night. Poor kid. Gonna make herself ill, isn't she? Yeah, well, she's not the only one, is she? You've been round the Crosby's all night? I'm OK. I slept in Bing's living room. It's just, well, the poor guy's there in his own. I don't know whether Jean's gonna make it through another night, and if the phone rings, I think someone ought to be there. Any news about little Thomas, yes? No, not so far. Anyway, those kids are mine. See you later. Do you know, I think I ought to go round there. What's of the Crosby's? Yeah, well, I mean, he's right, isn't he? Poor old fella. His grandson, his wife. I just think I ought to. Jackie, behave yourself, will you? Don't you put a foot through that door. The place is riddled with germs. You'll catch it. <laughs> well, Mick's been round. No, Jackie, no. And I mean it. I'm sorry. I'm definite. No. And don't you start going all Florence Nightingale on me. Listen, when this is through, you and me, we're going to be there. We're going to survive this, kid. Do you hear me? You and me, we're going to survive. So small. Bloody glass. How did they expect a kid that age to pull through without his mum and dad there to hold him? It's not safe, Max. They're really strict about it. I've tried. I can't stand this. I can't bear this. No, I don't care how dangerous it is. He's not going to die alone. Not without me there to hold him. Max! Oh! Oh! oh. Max! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Look, I don't care what I catch. No, please, you can't stop me. No one can stop me. I just want to hold my son. Please, just. It's my last time. I... Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Wish they'd tell us what's going on. Why are they collecting samples from me and nobody's been earlier? Yes. <sighs> Don't. Except you. Go on. Have you swallowed it yet, you fool? Hey, shite is in the cheek. Listen, this is your diarrhea pill, pea brain. Swallow it. Jack? 
Yeah? Where's that toffee? Oh, I'm sorry, I gave it to Emma. Have you swallowed it yet, you stupid moss? Or are you gonna spit it out the minute to take my eyes off oh, you? Okay? I'll get it. Right, I'm taking her out to do her what's it. Come on, girl. Oh, right, come in. Hey, uh, listen, mix goes down as a gopher, so if you want any shopping or anything. Oh, man, nice, yeah. Hey, love, Carl Banks. Do you want anything to buy? Oh, yeah, I've got a list. Hang on. I'm all right, thanks, Carl. Just a paper. Hey, listen, man. Uh, I've got something needs to deliver him. Yeah, give us the address. Well, actually, I was going to meet him myself at half eleven, end of Royal Street, you know, by the bus stop. Tall fellow with glasses, name of Alan. He'll be waiting. Um, give him this. And they'll give you cash. Cash? Yeah. It's me winnings. Uh, part of a syndicate, you know. Here, yeah, look. Take that for your trouble, I kid. What are you doing keeping the poor lad standing in the hall? I'm in love. Come on. Here you go. Oh, and a bag of dog biscuits. I'll just get you some money. Are you going to be doing this every day? Yeah, posts, papers, anything you want. Hey, listen, no offence about the other night, too. Yeah, you're all right, no sweat, I'll live. <laughs> he will if he gets over this dose of canine diarrhoea he's got. Canine diarrhoea? It's not a dog's disease. It is, love, yes. So draw your own conclusions. Hey, hey. Go on, get that animal out of here before she pukes the pill oh, up on Barry's carpet. It's all right, going on, eh? Hey, listen, don't forget half eleven Royal Street. Come on, girl. No milk for me. Oh, you're not slimming again, are you? <laughs> so what's going on up here, then? Spring cleaning? Yeah, something like that. Shouldn't be doing all this, you know, man. Not if you're not feeling too good. I'm all right, honestly. You're not hiding anything from me, are you? I mean, you would tell me if there was anything wrong. Yeah, of course I would. I'm worried about you, you know. It's not right this, you're being sick all the time. You've hardly eaten anything to die. I'm fine. Right, I'm going to go down and put the dinner on, and I'm going to stand over you while you eat it. You need to keep your strength up. I guess I've affected us all now. I don't really care. So, Mother, something I need to tell you. Is this good news or bad news? I don't know. You've heard from the solicitor? No. No, it's not that. Um, listen. When I went to see the doctor and he gave me the results from the samples... You're not ill. It's the virus, isn't it? They found something in your water. I'll go. I knew there was something wrong. Hey, here's your post. Oh, thanks. And your paper. Do you need any shopping? I don't think so. Uh... Right, give us a shout if you need anything. Bye. What is it? Oh, it's nothing much. Do you know, I thought there might have been a Mother's Day card here from Rachel. Not even a homemade one. I mean, Beth can remember, but Rachel obviously doesn't think it's worth celebrating. Do you want me to have a word? No, leave it. 
More hate mail. Same postmark. Mm, one warrant in one bolt, and it's same handwriting. Yeah, well, I'll burn them. So come on, the doctor. What did he tell you? I think you better sit down a minute. I don't know how to do this. Man, will you just say it? Wait there, I'll be a sec. Hi, Lee. Hiya. We've just come to get some tapes. Right. Yeah, we're doing some GCSE stuff around ours. Oh, that's a good idea. So you're doing GCSE revision? Well, he is. I'm not. I don't see the point in doing exams. I'm leaving school anyway. No, you're not. I am. I can leave at 16. I'm going to get a job. Doing what? Yeah, doing what? Well, check it, girl. Anything. I don't care as long as I get paid. I work down the supermarket or somewhere. Come on. See ya. See ya. Check out, girl. Not since yesterday, no. Oh, I've missed him. You know, I've got an house full of kids, plus Eddie, moaning about getting back to work. They clean me out of biscuits. Ah, well, now then. Biscuits. I can help you there, Rosie. I can even offer you a small discount on six packets or more. Thought there was a ban on that stuff. No, no, nothing official. Look, they're all airtight. Tell you what, Rose, virus you need a nice pick to get through any of that lot. All the same, love. I think I'll uh, give it a miss, if you don't mind. Till we got the all clear, like, wouldn't want to take any risks. Yeah, don't worry, love. Don't mind about me. I'll just go bankrupt. It's not that bad. Want to bet? Anyway, we've got a bit of good news, haven't we, eh, Josh? Lighten the gloom. No, love. Why not? Because we're not certain. I am. I'm expecting again. Oh! But congratulations. What's that face for? You don't believe me, do you? Well, I... <laughs> he doesn't believe me, you know. Ron, I'm convinced I'm pregnant. Women know these things, don't we? Well, I certainly knew the moment I fell for our car. Just knew. See? We just know. We're in touch with our bodies. <coughs> That's the third time you coughed. Oh, God. Quick. Get inside, run a bath, and put plenty of dental in it. God almighty. And gargle. Pregnant? You're pregnant? You mean that's... That's my baby? Yeah. My baby? Yes. Oh, I don't care about anything. Now I can face anything. Oh, man. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Come here. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, come on, sit down, put your feet up. Come on, let me get you something. No, don't worry, don't worry. I won't overreact. Stand up, do whatever you want. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, wait, wait. I, I think we ought to be sensible. Why? Why? Why have we got to be sensible? Because it's not... <laughs> Everything's against us. What? I mean, I'm nearly 40. I'm a bit long in the tooth to start having babies again. Oh, come on, you'll sail through <laughs> it. I might not. There's all sorts of complications at my age. And then there's Rachel. I mean, I don't even think how she's going to take Oh, it. let's just worry about her when the time comes. You never know. She might surprise you. Ooh. Oh, I don't think so. She Look. might. Oh. What about the trial? We don't know what's going to happen to us. I just think we ought to be sensible. Maybe I ought to... I mean, quickly, now, before we get Are you talking about an abortion? I just... I don't know what to do for the best. Look. This is the only time that that word is ever going to be mentioned in this house or anywhere else, right? How this baby is going to be born. And it's going to be loved. The most loved baby in the whole world. Okay. Oh, man. Aren't we clever? <laughs> oh. Just left loads of clothes. Yeah. 
No sign of a passport. Oh, hey. Oh, this is nice. Do you know you could feed half of Wales and what he must have paid for this? We'll try it on. Yeah, you will, yeah. That wouldn't fit me. Yes, it would. It's one of them dead loose fitting ones, you know, dead modern, dead trendy. And look at this. Photo of that Fram one on the beach, look. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cute? Yeah, it is. Oh, hey, look. Palm trees. Now, that'll be Mexico or Florida or somewhere. Florida? That the signs are in English. Oh, wait, stop snooping. I'm not snooping. I'm looking for clues, aren't I? I'll just try this on. Is uh, Miss Loveline in the bathroom? Yeah, she's in the bath. She'll be there hours. Hey, well, listen. Go and check it. Go. Nice. Oh, gonna be too tight, these, love. They was all right. No, they're not. Just try the jackets on. Oh, look, they're too tight and they're too short. Oh, look. I just want to see if the style suits. There. Oh, yeah. Now, what do you think? Oh, hey. Oh, you look like a man with a lot of money <laughs> and a lot of taste. Spot on, kid. Plus... Part owner of an exclusive little club. Mm -hmm. And a four bedroom detached villa in a posh suburb. Oh. And a wife with a little run around, a white two seater, and a very own gold credit card. Yeah, yeah, one day, kid. One day. Hey, and never mind, four bedroom detached, four bathroom detached mansion, kid, eh? Mm. Do you know, this would do me. I love this house, I could stay here forever. I want wardrobes just like that. And a cafeteria in the kitchen. Oh, don't be worried. I'll get you better than all this, kiddo. Oh, yeah. When we win seven million on the lottery. Hey. Emma? Oh, sorry. Hi, uh, yeah. Uh, just doing a bit of cleaning. Yeah, just doing a bit of uh, what's it, cleaning. Oh, right. Uh, is the analytic fan anything in this house? Uh, well, not that I know of. Emma might know. She's in the bath. I thought I could use it to bring down Mrs. Crosby's fever. I don't know what to do, whether to ring Patricia or not. I don't want to worry with Thomas being so ill, but if I don't, it could be too late. <sighs> God, they're dropping like flies, aren't they? Well, you know that spark, that fella down at the club with the beard? What, Davy? I don't know his name, but apparently he snuffed it yesterday. Oh, hey. I was only having a drink with him last week. <sighs> Who next? Well, not us. Anyway, this lucky fan. Nice suit, Jimmy. Yeah? Jacket's a bit tight, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm having it altered, you know. See you later. Hey. Am I doing all? Got so many there, he'll never notice, will he? fell for Beth. I was scared stiff of Trevor. So this is like a first then? Yeah. My first and your first born out of love. She's gonna be very special, this baby. She? Oh yeah. It's definitely a girl, there's no doubt about that. Oh, I suppose I want a boy this time. Well it's tough, isn't it? Hey um guess who else is expecting? Ron Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Dixon? Well, no, probably not. Well, who is that? I don't know, but it was his sample that tested positive. So we must have got it mixed up with someone else's. <laughs> it's you, isn't it? Mm. Go on, admit it. Well, I'm afraid not, no. But it does mean by a means of cutting deduction. That somebody else on the close is pregnant. Hmm.
Patrzcie. How has she been? Could you do me a favour, mate? Yeah. Could you um, ring the hospital and get through to Patricia? And tell her as gently as you can that um, her mother is... Uh... You see, I don't think I, I can do it at the moment. Just tell her to get here as quickly as possible. More blood? Yeah. I thought you were clear now. I am. That's why they wanted to study me antibodies. All oh, right, antibodies. Listen, are you still shopping for the clothes? Yeah. Well, what's the most popular line that people are asking for these days? Because I've got loads of tin stuff in here. I've got baked beans, red salmon, all airtight, all perfectly safe, and biscuits. So listen, I was thinking if you could take a selection around with you and flog them, then me and you, well, we could do a deal on everything you sold, couldn't we? I can't sell your stuff, Mr. Dixon. But nobody's gonna know it's my stuff, Hardy, and it's all perfectly safe. Just because some daft microbiologist fella starts laying down the law. Read that. You forgot your throat spray? Use it. Hey, look, a picky the trading post on the front page. What do you think about that, eh? The front page? Hey. You better read the article in the centre pages. Hey, we're in the paper then. What's it say? I'll sue them. I'll drag them through every court in England. What does it say? Ron, I've got any Mother's Day cards, mate. Have you read this? Read what? Listen to this. Blah, blah, blah. Locals say the deadly virus may well be a particularly dangerous type of food poisoning. A possible source is the local food store, the Trading Post. Negligent hygiene or a Negligent faulty... Negligent hygiene? That's libel. They're implying here that I'm selling contaminated stock. The owner, Mr. Ronald Dixon, 55... 55? I'm not 55. I'll sue them. Why did they always get it wrong? Who shares his Brookside close home with living lover Miss Beverly McLaughlin, 24, and their hey, one-year-old son. Hey, mention me. Where? What does it say? They can't go around writing stuff like this. It's going to ruin me trade. Ron, Mother's Day cards, mate. Yeah, yeah. The kids made them. Take your pick. How much? 150. 150 for that? Take it or leave it. You know, Scrooge, you make money out of your dead grandmother. I'll get you something inside. Nah, no, you're all right. I've got to have it now. You've got our post there, Carl. Yeah, there you go. So, I'll slip this in with it. Give us a paper as well. Right. Yeah. One pound fifty. Thank you. Yeah, right, so I'll get off then. Do you want anything else? Oh, yeah, I want some of those face mask things. You know what doctors wear? You can get them. And uh, old pregnancy tests from the chemist. 
pregnancy. What, one of those do-it-yourself things. You can't ask Carl to get you one of them. Well, I know he's a man of the world. Look, you've embarrassed him now. I'm well, just making sure the quack got it right, eh, Don? Hey, it's not for him, it's for me. Well, actually it is for him, because I don't need one. I know I'm pregnant, but he won't believe me. Are you pregnant, really? What an amazing coincidence. Why, you're gonna tell us you're pregnant now? Eh, uh, no, I, I was just gonna say, what an amazing coincidence that it was your two samples that got mixed up. I don't think it's a coincidence at all. I think it's blindly obvious. Yeah, here you are. I got a paper. There's this article. Oh, God. What's up? Look at them all. Cards. Rachel Jordash, R. Jordash, Rachel Jordash. What's the date today? Um, was it the 26th or 27th yesterday? I thought it was the 28th, wasn't it? So that means today's... Or the 29th. It's Rachel's yeah. birthday, her 16th. Do you mean she's gone all day and hasn't mentioned it? She was anything at breakfast. She said anything to you? No, nothing. Well, maybe she's forgotten as well. Well, Rachel forgot her own birthday. Pigs may fly. Well, what are we going to do? Well, she'll understand. She won't. She will. Look, she's been calming down a bit lately. She knows the score. We've got the trial hanging over us. We don't know from one day to the next that we're going to catch this bug or virus thing, whatever it is. What's going on out there? So what does that mean, then? It's too early to say yet, Ron. Oh, I see. So it doesn't mean anything? It's just a fairly hopeful sign, that's all. You know, lights at the end of the tunnel. What's going on? Nothing. I've had a word with Dr. Horton, and there's been no new cases reported for the last 36 hours. People are still snuffing it, though. Yeah, the woman on the back of us died last night. <laughs> she didn't. But the point is, if there's no new cases in the next 24 hours, then we could be given the all clear. They could lift the cordon. <coughs> Just got a bit of a tickle in his throat. <coughs> Come on, love. I'll take your temperature again. <coughs> Listen, has anyone got a spare lucky fan they could lend for Mrs. Crosby? Isn't she in hospital? No, not at the moment. And the other good news is Thomas Farnham's on the mend. We could still get a doctor, David. I promised her. I made her a solemn promise. No, nothing. One pair of tights. Nothing that could convince that it was a birthday present. Oh, this is awful. Well, when were you supposed to go out and buy this present? I mean, people are dying, we're trapped. I could at least have wished a happy birthday. Well, um, did you look through all this post? I mean... Yeah, I just think they're cards for Rachel. Oh, no, yeah, hang on, there's, um... Yeah, there's one addressed to you. It's from Rachel. Do you think it's a Mother's Day card? Oh, look, it is. Yeah, no, but it's... Not from Rachel, or man. I'm sorry, I didn't think. Not from... Oh, no, it just seems like some bad April Fool's joke now. From you and the new baby. Oh, Simon, what did I do to deserve you? <laughs> oh, here it is, stand by. Hello, love. Happy birthday. Oh, you remembered. Any post for me? Yeah, it's on the side. I hope I get some money off Auntie Verena. Why didn't you say something? Well, like, happy birthday, Rachel. Why should I? I feel dreadful. Your mum's got a lot on her mind at the moment, you know, Rach. It's all right. I didn't expect you to remember anyway. Don't worry, Mum. I know I'll lower come on your list of priorities. It's not true. Leave it. It's OK. I'm used to it. I'm used to Beth being the one and only. I know you never love me, Mum. Fair enough. I don't care. But I'm 16 now, so I can go whenever I want. Oh, hey, it's 20 quid from Auntie Brenna. At least she remembered. I could have caught this virus and you wouldn't have even noticed. Be easier for you all if I was dead, wouldn't it? Is she asleep? I think she's... 
Would you mind? Things to say. Twist again. Mm -hmm. Oh, boss. Thank you. Mick. Oh, by one, Jim. Yeah. All right, love. I think I'll go up, actually. If there's any calls for me, we'll give you a shout. Thanks. See you in the morning, eh, kids? She's not going to bed. You what? She just wants a bit of peace, Paul, love. Yeah. Come on, Mick, what are you doing? I'm sticking, Jimmy. Oh. Pay twenties. Pay me? Not much money left then. Bit of a ropey bank. It's all right, don't be worrying. So, uh, Barry still has rung in then? Not a word. Seems odd, doesn't it? Not even to let your own fiancé know where you are. She must be thinking the worst by now. Oh, she is. Are you dealing or what? Yes. This is your favourite bit, listen. So much music we've shared, haven't we? <laughs> what about all those old 50s songs? Johnny Ray, remember? You were distinctly enamoured with Mr Ray, weren't you? All that sobbing and crying. <laughs> and Nando's hideaway, such a night. They were playing that the first time I saw you. Bristol. New Year's Eve, that party. You arrived with a chap in a Triumph Sports. I can remember exactly what you were wearing. Pale blue net, strapless, sequence of the bodice, am I right? I thought, who is that beautiful girl? You're like Deborah Carr, any prettier. You sparkled. You could have had anyone at that party. A Dr. Chappie from Norwich, an Australian bloke, what was his name? He could have been out there now, you know. Million acre ranch, sunshine, swimming pool. You don't. You've never regretted marrying me, have you, Jean? Have you? Because I don't think I could bear it if I thought you were lying there regretting anything. Ready for this, Max? What would I do without her? She's always been there, always. So much I haven't said to her. Now it's too late. All those things I should have said. Hello? Sorry, are you breaking up? Barry? Thought you might like a little music. I've been trying to think of the name of that Australian bloke. Yes, it's a Johnny Simpson. <laughs> Do you know what he said to me? He said, um, if she ever gets tired of you, David. <laughs> Funny thing is, I always thought you would get tired of me. <laughs> Back of my mind, there was always this niggling fear that you'd leave me. Not like this, though, my darling. What's that I go first? 
really deserved you, did I? God, I thought I was the luckiest man in the world. When you... You haven't regretted it, have you? I know I've not always been a model husband. Touched too much testosterone in the old tubes, I'm afraid. That's all it was, Jeannie. Do you know that, don't you? You never met him. Never? Never. Not even with all that business with Patsy's nanny. I know you fooled. I suppose I did get a bit carried away. It's damned easy, you know, to imagine you're in love. It was nothing. Nothing. Love. Real love is what you and I. Forty years of sticking together and growing together and forgiving each other. I've loved you all my life, Jean. I always will. Remember the time you abandoned me in Mallorca? You thought I was after the maid. I never touched you, you know. Well, uh, it's not entirely true. I'm a bit late for lies now. I, I did kiss her once. And there was an afternoon of, uh, what should we say, uh, dalliance on the balcony, but nothing more. I have never really been unfaithful to you, Jean. For the last 30 years, I have been entirely faithful. God Almighty, listen to me. You should despise me. I despise myself. The truth is, Jean, you are married to a liar and a cheat. I've got to tell you this. I must before it's too late. I want things to be straight between us. I wish I... I would do anything to change things. Anything. Audrey, she was, she was so persistent. She was all over me. It was, it was when the old equipment wasn't working too well and you were being so decent about it. It's not that I'm blaming you, my darling, no. It's just that I don't think you ever quite realize what that sort of failure does to a man. And, and, and she said that I would never find out it was something wrong with me or whether... And so, one evening, it, it, it was just the once, I swear it, just the once, and it meant absolutely nothing. And all the time I was thinking, I'm betraying the woman I love. I'm betraying 40 years of her trust and the remorse. I couldn't live with myself. I couldn't talk to anyone about it. I, I felt so ashamed if I could just change things, if I could... Wipe that night out. I am so dreadfully sorry, Jean. I am so dreadfully, dreadfully sorry. The one good thing about this lass of fever or whatever it is, it's took these off us for a bit. Hmm. Any news about Jean Crosby? No, nothing. I wonder what it's like to die. If it was 50 years ago, they'd hang me for killing Trevor. To us. They would. And I've made a precise minute. It's a bit morbid, isn't it? You don't have to think of some weird things, you. I've thought about death a lot the last couple of years. Oh, no wonder Ron's threatening to sue. Have you read this? Yeah. I, um, the mystery pregnancy. It's Bev. Bev? I nearly blew it too, almost told her about us. Oh, don't worry, I didn't say anything. Oh, please don't say anything to anyone, not until I've told Rachel. I won't. It's dead hard, though, you know. I want to tell the world. I want to make banners and stick them up outside the house. I want to make public announcements. I know. Never thought I'd have a kid of my own. I've come to terms with it. Oh, listen to this. Richard Sims, a member of the religious cult who set up their headquarters in Brookside Close last year, told our reporter... This sickness is God's revenge on the people of the close for handing our leader to his death. There you go. I always said it was God's revenge, didn't I? Aren't they dreadful, these journalists? Oh, is it, this is that roach again. Oh, God, no. What's up? Well, they're blaming us now. Some local residents, however, believe the source of the infection can be directly traced to number 10, the notorious house of death oh. where the corpse of Trevor Jordash was discovered under the patio. His wife, Mandy Jordash, 39, oh, with the help that. of her student daughter, Beth, 19, a self-professed lesbian, is accused of fatally stabbing oh, her... Give us in here. All right. 
I'll throw it in the bin. Well, what if Rachel sees that? <sighs> Rachel thinks that we're responsible for everything else that's gone wrong with the world. So it's not going to surprise her to discover that we're to blame for the virus as well. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Sinbad. Hmm? How am I going to tell Rachel about the baby? The longer I leave it, the harder it's going to get. Well, he's in Florida. Yeah, I come back and he flies out. Why? Why is he in Florida? God only knows. Sandy Kedge on the phone, though. What are all those? Guess. Things he wants you to do. Things he wants me to do. Well, they'll have to wait, won't they? I mean, he thinks he can just tweak a rope and I'll jump. He doesn't care, does he? He doesn't care what's happening in other people's lives. Inconvenience and, and trouble, he'll, he puts people through. Well, sod it. I'm not going to clear up his mess for him. Not tonight, anyway. Just go in the loo and be a sec. Oil up, put the kettle on, will ya? Emma? We should uh, wake him. No, I'll leave him. Let him sleep. <sighs> He's dead. I know he is. Oh, no way. We've already been through all this. If he was dead or ill or hurt somewhere, we'd know by now. Then why hasn't he rung? Because he's... Well, some men love, you know. <sighs> Look, love. Barry Grant, he's been a free agent all his life. He's never had to think in terms of phoning someone to explain where he is. When it crosses his mind, he'll ring you. But never count on it, love, never. Not with a bloke like Barry. Listen, love, you might think you've tamed him. You might have even got him semi-domesticated. But you'll never get him into slippers and a cardi. And you wouldn't want him even if you did, would you? No. You wouldn't be buried then, would you? No. <sighs> I'm so scared, Jackie. What of, love? I've been here without him. People dying. Trapped, aren't we? This time next week, I could be. I could be lying in a coffin. Oh, God, Emma, love. That's getting a bit morbid. He knew I was scared. He doesn't care. He doesn't love me, does he? Just because someone doesn't phone you doesn't mean they don't love you. It means you're not thinking about them. He just went, Jackie. Without saying goodbye. All that stuff about him wanting to change. He's scared stiff of changing. He doesn't want to marry me at all. He's running away, isn't he? From me. Now, is that stupid? You jump into all kinds of wild conclusions now. He's dead. He doesn't love you. Next thing you'll tell me, he's kidnapped by spacemen. What would you do if you were me? Well, I'd have a hot drink with a shot of whiskey. <laughs> then I'd have a sleep. And I'd wait and see what happened tomorrow. There's nothing much I can do, is there? <sighs> is this what it's going to be like all the time when we're married? Not all the time, love, no. I don't know anything about him, do I? 
I don't think anyone does, love. It's over, isn't it? That's what he's trying to tell me. On the Real Holiday Show next this evening, the true story behind Jaunts, Tiberitz, the Lake District and Goa. I fell asleep. She drifted away without anyone to hold her hand. I couldn't even do that for her. She was all alone. At the end, she was all on her own. Well, it's hardly worth revving up my chamois. I'm losing a fortune on me round being stuck here, you know. Hope nobody nicks it while I'm here. What are they up to? Oh, taking air samples or something, I think. I'm checking the fridge for this virus. They still haven't got a clue, though, have they? I thought Gemma wanted sugar puss. So what does Gemma want? She wants a banana. Well, there's no bananas left. Sorry about this. Gemma! Don't mind, Jules. Love, we're used to it. Morning. Morning, Jules. Hi, love. You all right this morning? Gemma, what do you want for your breakfast? <gasps> Eat them, Leo. I'm not throwing them out. Do you know, I could kill Barry Grant. She's okay. She's asking for tea. She was. Her hand was so cold. And her toothbrush. She wants a wash. And she wants to see you, Dad. <laughs> Bread, disinfectant, TCP. Uh, the other thing you wanted. Brilliant. Ron, I've got the pregnancy test. I'm just going upstairs a minute. 
So you got it then, eh? I get whatever I'm sold to. Worm in tablets, pregnancy tests. Excuse me. Uh, right, that's uh, £19.42p, please. Oh, all right, Nick, come in. All right, man. All right, Carl. So, is there any news on Jean Crosby? No, not yet. Listen, I won't stop. I've just been talking to the communicable diseases guy. Now, there's been no new cases for three days, so it looks like we'll be able to lift the cordon. Oh, does that mean...? Got the old clear, then? No, not yet, but I'm having a meeting around at Barry's to uh, explain what he said. Two o'clock this heavy. Listen, Carl, can you pass that around? Yes, yeah, sure. And, Ron, if you want to open the trading post, that's fine, you know. I don't believe this. Whoops. There's something wrong with this test. You've bought a faulty one. Oh, is it not working, then, love? Look, I'd better be off. I'll see you later. Yeah, me too. Get to now, Mick. Right, uh, that's £19.42p, please. Show a negative. Yeah, well, maybe it's... It can't be me. It must be the test. It's a dud. Hey, hang on, just a minute. <laughs> Just suppose, you know, just for a minute. Then again, I mean, they're not usually that accurate, are they, that early on? I mean, it happens. Carl, you couldn't do us a favour, could you? Pop out and get another one. What now? Please. Oh, why? And what happens if that one's faulty as well? Hey, you've got a point there. You best get two. On second thoughts, make it three. Oh, three? Why stop at three? Why not buy a whole bloody chemist shop? Right, sir, uh, that's £19.42p, please. Hey, Dad, don't. It's all right. It's OK. Perhaps I, I do need to ask you something. Listen, um, last night we were um, reminiscing a bit and uh, I got a bit confessional. And, um, well, the thing is, do you think it's possible that if someone's carrying a high temperature and slipping in and out of a coma that they could hear everything you say? Do you think so? What on earth did you tell her, Dad? Didn't tell her you never liked her bread and butter pudding, did you? <laughs> Darling, do you think we ought to be off? They've just run from the hospital so we can take the kids home. Oh, great. Dad, do you mind if we slip away just for half an hour? No, 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 of course not. Off you go. Actually, those um, faxes from Barry, I just need to see Jimmy Corgill before we go. Right. Stay with her till she wakes up, yeah? Yes, yes, of course. Hey, and Dad, don't worry about whatever it is you confess to her. I mean, Mum's alive. She's going to get better. That's all that matters. It's over. Yes, I think it may well be. The show. Um, I was thinking last night. I wonder what they wear nowadays. Sixteen years since I was last pregnant. Things change. And then I thought, what are you worrying about? If you're in prison uniform. Man. It's no good fooling myself, Sinbad. I've got to face it, I will. Hang on. What are you doing? From beginning to end, this is going to be done as properly as we can manage. Oh, no. Will you marry me? You couldn't be more encouraging, could you? I mean, you know, would you take me more seriously if I stood up? I am taking you seriously. I want to marry you. Thank you. What for? For loving you? For loving me enough to want to take on everything that goes with me. Just say yes, then. I'm going to prison. I could get life. That could be 15 years or more. Well, I'll be here. I can't. I can't ask you to. You're not asking me. I'm asking you. Just say yes. I'll think about it. Pork noisettes in sweet and sour plum sauce and walnuts. Oh, that oh, sounds well. good. How do you fancy that? Yeah, great. I'm not sure I'm up to it then. What a noise that's. No idea. What a noise that's, am I? Nuts. Pork nuts? Oh, aye, I'm not eating that. No, actually. Jimmy, yeah. Max is here to see you, mate. Oh, aye. Sorry to bother you. Sorry. I got a phone call from Barry yesterday. All right, um, where is he like? Florida. Florida? Apparently, yes. Is he all right? Oh, yeah, he's full of bounds. Um, he's fine. I take it you you didn't know he was in Florida? I'm just his fiance, not his business partner. Why should he bother to let me know where he was? Why should he ruin me? I don't understand this. Negative. The whole batch must be faulty. I'll try another one. No, love. That's enough. Three can't be wrong. You've got to face it. I'm not pregnant. Well, maybe it's a blessing, eh? You 
would say that, wouldn't you? You never wanted another baby. I just thought... Yeah, go on, say it. You made it obvious enough. I'm just trying to be realistic, look, that's all. I do feel pregnant, Rob. Well, I'm sorry, love. I mean, wouldn't you love a little girl? I love any baby that was ours, but we just can't afford it. Not at the moment. Yeah. We can't love, not unless I win the lottery. I mean, I can't manage everything. New i fine, new furniture, all the clothes you want, and a baby. We're not that broke, are we? We've been spending it like it comes out the tap. And you've got to remember, the shop's been shut for a fortnight, you know. I've not made a bean. So when can we afford to have one? Well, when we've thought about it and talked it over and saved up a bit. Yeah, and you're in the cemetery and I'm past it. <laughs> yeah, well, that sounds about right. Listen, love, now wouldn't have been a good time anyway, would it? We don't know for certain what's happening over this bug. You know, it could flare up again. We don't know anything about it. So, if I'm not pregnant, who sample was it then? Carl Banks. Yes, That's what it says here. He wants to move Carl Banks from the restaurant to the club, and he wants me to train the lad up in club management. Is that it? Well, it's a bit more than that, actually. Um... He wants Carl to take over the day-to-day -day side, you know, uh, books, wages. Oh, I get it. So he doesn't trust me. It's just while he's away. He's been away before, hasn't he? Hey, and I've run things on my own, very successfully. Well, perhaps he's intending to stay away longer than he thought. Oh, go away. He doesn't trust me. Carl Banks, I mean, what does he know, eh? Nothing? Is that right about Barry and Emma? He hasn't even contacted her once. <sighs> no, not once. Kate spends half the night sat by the phone. Carl Banks, let me have a look at that. Didn't even send me a message via Max. God, Jackie, I've been so stupid. I really thought... He didn't love me at all, did he? He probably thought he did for a while. He probably woke up one morning and thought, God, if I don't find myself someone soon, I'm going to land up a miserable old git with a fat bank account and nothing else. <laughs> so he looked around saw me and thought, yeah, why not? She'll do. I'm sure it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly how it was. He was scared that he couldn't have the things other men have, like a home and a family. But he was ten times more scared when he found out that was exactly what he was gonna get. Next time, Jackie. Next time, I'm gonna find myself a nice, kind, dull man with a steady job and a, a nice hobby, like decorating or stamp collecting. <laughs> You'll be all right. Yeah, I will. I'm going home now. I'm not going to cry. No, don't. I'm not. Don't waste any more tears on that lump of... Well, I won't say what. I won't. I'll waste any more love on a man who can't even pick up a phone. Can't even be bothered to send me a message. Hey. It's been nice knowing you. You keep in touch, eh? say it was the case of God. Hello, Julia. I think it was rats myself, like the bionic plague. I reckon it was rats eating away at that body under Irene's patio. Hey, don't come too close. And what I reckon is that they've gone into Ron Dixon's shop and infested it. Oh, I. I'll pass that theory on to the medics, then, shall I? So how are you keeping? Fighting fit, love. Oh. So how many dead, then, on the close? I heard Jean Crosby was very bad, as she, um... Jimmy! Hi, hi. Got the message then, did you? Yeah, Max told me it's brilliant news. Mm. Well, just remember you're there to learn. Under me. Right, so when do you finish cording duty? Any time, really. They're gonna lift it later today, anyway. 
Right, so shall I meet you down the club then in about ten minutes? You can show me the ropes. Yeah. Jean? Listen to me, darling, I... Are you awake? The thing is that last night when I thought you were... I was just jabbering a bit and I somehow got onto the subject of Audrey. I don't know whether you remember. Jean, you... You didn't hear me, did you, darling? Jean? Jean? Oh, for God's sake, wake up and tell me you didn't hear me. Hey, Ron. Say anything you're lucky on, now. Right. Oh, look who's here. All right, Ron, how are you keeping? <laughs> oh, all right, you know, a bit of a cold, that's all. And an hour full of holes. <laughs> uh, the blood samples, eh? Still looks like we're out of the woods. Yeah. All right, lads. All right, Eddie. All right, all right, Ted. God, it feels weird, this. Like I've just been out of the nick. <laughs> it's the first I've walked for two weeks. I've been stuck in that house, fixing this and patching that, being relieved to get back to work, I can tell you. <laughs> all right, lads. Oh, yeah, sir. A bit of a rest for a change. <laughs> Where's Ron? Put your lights on. Yeah, they're OK. Oh, congratulations, Ron. That was not there, just a flick of the switch. <laughs> oh, no, congratulations on the good news. Ah. Yeah, Rosie told me. So, uh, when's it cheap? Well, what's all this, then, Ron? I was expecting. Oh. Actually, she isn't. Bit of a mix-up with the samples. Oh, hey, listen, I'm sorry, mate. God, me and my big foot. Ah, no, nah, don't worry about it. I'm thankful she isn't, really. Not with all this virus about. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And when it starts out, the blue scares the wits out of everybody, and now it seems like it's gone. Well, we don't know for sure that it's gone, though, do we? I mean, even the medics don't even know what it is. Oh, where it's come from. Well, it put the fear of God in me, even if the doctors don't know what it is. Scary, that, isn't it? When you realise that they don't know everything, mate. Eh? Mate, there's diseases out there waiting to happen, mate. Do you know they used to stick leeches on people? What? Oh, yeah, I know they did, to uh, reduce the fever. It's not as daft as it sounds, actually. Didn't you ever think it's who in those days, I can tell you. It's not all progress, you know. <laughs> so, where? Uh, the sample that no one's claiming, then, then? Somebody else in the close must be up the duff. Yeah, it was not me. <laughs> well, it's not me. This is unused muscle. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much choice left, really, is there? I mean, going around the close to say, uh, your Mandy. Oh, no. I bet it's Patricia Could be your Rosie, Ed. Oh, bringing up babies at that age. Nah, we're past that stage, me and Rose. Anyway, you look going to stand around here natting an all day. Is anybody going to buy anything? Because I've got losses to recoup. Hey, don't forget the meeting the Grancy's. God, I hope it's not Rosie. <laughs> See you, Rich. Yeah. Uh, actually, me. I promise you won't tell anyone. Secrets, see. I've got to tell someone, otherwise I'm going to burst. It's Mandy. Look, she's not pregnant, Mum. She's not the one who got the sample mixed up. That's someone else that's separate, but she is. Do you want to go through that again, Sid, but in English? <sighs> Mandy's pregnant. We're expecting her. Oh, wait, Sid. My first day, third, due in October. <laughs> Hey, that's... Uh, I don't know what to say, lad. Like. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> been in a coma or something. I don't remember much about it. Thank God. Thank God you're better. Mm. I thought that... Tea, David? It's coming up. Can I get you something else? A biscuit, sandwich, some fruit or something? Just tea. So what's the decision, then? Still thinking about it. Well, while you're at it, think about this: that if we're not married, and I'm not legally the baby's father, what's going to happen to her? I mean, suppose we are looking at 15 years. I mean, they might put her into care. 
Would they do that? I don't know. I don't know what they'd do. Well, we ought to find out. I don't want my kid farmed out to foster parents or put in a council home. I had all that. I'll look after her and I'll make a home for her. Look, even if we're only talking about ten years, Sinbad, I can't ask you to wait that long. I'll be 50 before I'm free again. You'll have found someone else. Don't talk soft. Well, let's just wait and see what happens in court, eh? Did we get any refreshments? I could have brought along some nice tin sausage rolls. Business not too good this, have we, then? Not too good. It's been dead. Heady there was my only customer, and he never bought anything. Listen, folks, I would like to make a formal announcement. The trading post is open. Business is normal. <coughs> nothing poisonous, nothing dangerous to your health. Right, uh, shall we get started? Just to let you all know that the quarantine is officially lifted. Does that mean we can go back to work? As soon as you like, it. Well, thank God for that. Hey, but how do we know it's safe? Yeah, I mean, the virus could still be incubating in whatever it is they incubate. Bloodstream. Well, all our tests have been negative throughout, so it looks like they've given us the all clear. Yeah, but what about all them samples from the uh, fridges and the loos and things? They're still being analysed, but they found nothing suspicious so far, so it looks like the homes and the drains are in the clear. Well, where did it come from, then? I'll get it. Well, they still don't know about that yet, so they could have an answer in about a week's time. But while you're all here, I'd just like to thank you all for your cooperation over the last couple of weeks. I know it's been tough. And if you could just squeeze one more blood sap along for the buffins, then we're finished. Kids, by the way, can go back to school on Monday. Are they? It's only one more week and then you break up. <laughs> right then, uh, thanks to everybody and well done. Right. I'll get the kettle on, eh? Hey, Mum, I've got some news. Barry's taking me on down the club. Kind of assistant manager, proper suits and everything. Hey. Yeah, he's training me up. <sighs> hey, Banksy. Give us an hand with these coffees, will you? Club work. Better than to give you in the kitchen, love. Doing good. Bit of responsibility for the change. Hey, you'll be all right. Hey, remember that Fran Gill? You know, the one with the long blonde hair? She's in Florida, isn't she? Is she? Mm, maybe he's gonna have to see her, you know, and the little lad. What makes you think she's in Florida? Um, well, it's just a guess, really. Well, she is, actually, but I, I doubt whether he's going to see her. Well, closest thing to a family he's ever likely to get, isn't it? <laughs> looks like the wedding's off, then. Yeah, it looks like it. And what the hell is he playing? <laughs> God knows. She's going home to her dad. Left the ring in his room. Well, I'm left with a lot of faxes and two businesses to run. It was weird, you know, because I was convinced I was pregnant. I had all the symptoms. Oh, yeah, I was really sorry to hear about that. Eddie told me. Well, it's not you. It's definitely not me. Oh, it's not me, no. It's definitely not. Got to be Patricia Farnham, then. Having a snooze. Good God. What are you doing up? Get back in the bed. I needed another drink. <sighs> she looks so peaceful dozing away there. Nice dream. Yeah. I had some fascinating dreams while I was ill. At least, I think they were dreams. What uh, sort of? Or were they? No, I don't think they can have been. Because they were so extraordinarily vivid. There you were, by the bed, telling me all about your sad little episode of adultery with Audrey. I heard every word. It wasn't a dream, was it? The 
Jimmy Corkale story is out now, priced £4.99 from most bookshops. Next on ITV, the Ruth Rendell Mysteries, here on 4, another trip to Angst Valley and back with Ellen.